Hey everyone, welcome back to my audiobook channel. I'm your host, Gronte, and today we're doing a standalone episode to recap a book that we got about halfway through previously. This book is called Supercharged, and it's about 3D printing and the supply chain. So in this chapter, chapter six, we're gonna take a look at how 3D printing directly impacts the supply chain and what kind of changes we could expect to see in the coming years. I hope you enjoy. This video is part of an audiobook series featuring Supercharged, How 3D Printing Will Drive Your Supply Chain by Len Panette in 2019. For more audiobooks, please visit my YouTube channel or find me on Spotify and visit my website for downloads. Chapter 6, The Impact of 3D Printing on the Supply Chain Today's supply chains are facing a fast-changing landscape of economic and demand pressures. The world of Henry Ford, with its mass production of things that came in any color so long as it's black, has all but disappeared into the mists of time. Other than continuing to want the best price possible today, today's customers are very different than those of the past. They want more customization and personalization from their products. They have a far lower tolerance for waiting, be it for new designs or things to arrive at their doorstep or in operations. They, want ch they change what they want faster than ever, so product life cycles are shorter than they used to be. They are more likely to compare offerings and negotiate, looking to increase the value of what they get. Together, these four customer demands result in more complex demand forecasts, which can quickly balloon into ever more bloated inventories and higher obsolescence costs. Supply chains need to more, be more responsive and agile, which has led to the emergence of several solutions, techniques, and tools. Today's supply chains increasingly use automation, from robots in manufacture to robotic process bots and intelligent agents, to increase productivity, reduce work, adding no value, and lowering error rates. They employ data analytics to identify issues before they become problems, to optimize operations, and to offer their customers an advantage where even the most marginal benefit is sought. As supply chains become more complex, having to cater to the needs of omni-channels with elements spread across wide geographies, their management became exponentially harder, with more risks threatening them. There is now a greater need for strategies and actions that mitigate risks and, wherever possible, eliminate them, such as by seeking ways to shorten long supply chains, to become more responsive and flexible, and to develop ways to deliver precisely what the customer wants, where they want it, and when they want it. Over the last 60 years, companies have succeeded in managing these, pr these pressures by using platform-based design and postponement, using common core designs and delaying final additions and alterations to meet customer needs further down the supply chain, sorry, further down the value chain, closer to those customers. The automotive industry started this with chassis platforms and engines, which were then pr product <laughs> productized into individual models. For instance, the recently launched Jaguar XE is a saloon car with the same chassis and engine as the sporty Coupe F-Type. That same methodology was notably used by the mobile phone handset manufacturer Nokia, which in the 1990s and early 2000s moved from an operating approach of designing and manufacturing individual models separately to creating a small set of common platforms from which it could respond to customer needs, producing new models so quickly that its product pipeline became known as the Nokia machine gun. In today's environment, maintaining the manufacturing capability and capacity to accommodate the nuanced demand from customers increases costs, eventually becoming unsustainable. New solutions to manage the supply chain are required, and 3D printing has shown itself to be one. 3D printing impacts all parts of the supply chain, not just the usually discussed area of manufacture. Understanding its impact is critical to deciding whether to use it. This chapter will take a close look at how 3D printing affects each of the component parts of the supply chain, examining what benefits and challenges it brings to each. This will include an examination of the key supply chain metrics that are impacted, building on the points already made in earlier chapters. Defining the supply chain. To fully appreciate how 3D printing affects the supply chain, we must agree on what the supply chain is. All too often, supply chain is interpreted to be the movement or storage of things, i.e. logistics. 
At other times, it is considered to refer to the sourcing and procurement of materials and services. It is much more than this, encompassing many parts of a business and acting as the backbone to operations. While there are plenty of models that define what a supply chain is, the one most widely accepted and understood is the Supply Chain Operation Reference Model, or SCORE. Developed in the mid-1990s by the Supply Chain Council and updated regularly since, SCORE describes the supply chain in five key business processes. Plan, Source, Make, Deliver, and Return. These are underlined by a sixth process, Enable. Each of these processes contains the sub-processes and activities, metrics, and best practices relevant to that part of the operating model. As Shoshana Cohen and Joseph Russell say in their authoritative book, Strategic Supply P Management, quote, the SCORE model provides a framework and standardized terminology to help organizations integrate a number of management tools, such as business process reengineering, benchmarking, and best practice ana analysis. The SCORE toolbox enables organizations to develop and manage effective supply chain architectures, end quote. In this architecture, the six processes cover the business thus. Plan, the set of processes related to getting the supply chain ready for operation, from demand planning to what will be supplied to meet that demand and how that will be achieved. Source, those processes related to the acquisition of materials and services, from identifying sources to the actual procurement processes itself. Make. The manufacturing processes where goods are made and services de developed for onward sale to satisfy customer requirements. Deliver. The storage and movement of materials, work in progress, and finished goods before, during, and after manufacture. Return. The reverse flow of materials, typically from customers back to the company, such as for damage-related, end-of-life, or recycling purposes. Enable. All those activities that support the operation of the supply chain, from data and information flow to finance, marketing, and general management and administration. Of course, different businesses have different forms, and supply chains will naturally vary. The strength of the SCORE model is that it is a strong architecture that can be used to understand virtually any business, and more relevantly, to see where and how different factors will affect supply chains, such as the effect of 3D printing. To properly and more easily appreciate how 3D printing impacts each part, this chapter will look at them in the order indicated by the numbers. 3D printing and the make stage. Today, the most evident advantage of the technology are those related to making things, both in ter terms of cost and time. 3D printing allows for true demand-driven manufacturing, where production is discrete and often customized based on an actual order or per consumption, instead of relying on forecasts. This is the case whether that demand arises externally and internally, from outside customers or from the internal supply chain needs. Moreover, the end customer can now be involved at every stage, in every step of the production process, from conceptualization to finished product, and that in itself has a transformational effect on manufacturing, with that collaboration, both users and producers become designers, testers, and assessors. As described in Chapter 2, 3D printing an item is itself a slow process compared to traditional manufacturing techniques, taking hours if not days rather than seconds or minutes. When the entire time to make the part is considered, however, from tooling up and setting machinery to work to producing the part itself, 3D printing is clearly a much faster option. Moreover, the advantage of 3D printing to make items with fewer individual components, each of which might otherwise need its own production line, also results in fewer assembly steps, leading to swifter production cycles and lower manufacturing costs. Combined, these are far these benefits mean that the despite the current high cost of 3D printers, they are far more competitive versus the whole cost of setting up and running a traditional manufacturing line. This has already been the case in the production of prototypes for several years, such as for the helicopter blade manufacturer Automated Dynamics, which achieved a 60-70% to 70 reduction in the retooling costs for its prototype development. Increasingly, it is also the case in production, 
While it was building a Suez super tanker, Spanish shipbuilder Navantia achieved a 17% cost saving for two ventilation grills by switching from traditional to 3D printing manufacturer, despite also changing the material from stainless steel to lighter, stronger, carbon fiber reinforced plastic. In doing so, Navantia reduced the lead time for those items from five weeks to three hours. The UK medical company Crispin Orthotics makes orthoses, which are externally applied devices which prevent or correct disabilities, promote or improve function of the affected area, or help reduce pain. Orthoses may, for instance, assist or resist joint motion or relieve weight, such as leg braces, insoles, or support casts. Typically, each orthosis is made of multiple parts that need to be assembled. By directly 3D scanning the patient to create the right models, optimizing those for production, then using 3D printers, Crispin Orthotics has reduced the number of individual parts, accelerated manufacturing time, and halved unit costs. The patients benefit from having lightweight, durable, bespoke orthoses in less time than was possible using traditional techniques. If a broader comparison of traditional techniques versus 3D printing is made, beginning with the development of a prototype, through modifying designs, to producing objects, 3D printing is generally the better option for items that have the following characteristics. 1. A final design arrived at after numerous iterative design cycles. 2. A need to make for make-to-order or low-batch sizes. 3. Complex design or with high design variability. 4. Assembled from several subparts. 5 made with one or few materials. As discussed earlier in this book, 3D printing allows manufacturers to make better parts, more suited to their circumstances of use. Depending on those circumstances, this includes making items that are stronger, lighter, or more homogeneous. Aerospace companies, for instance, are particularly interested in the potential to reduce weight while retaining strength. The space transport company SpaceX deploys 3D printing to produce valve bodies in their engines, having found that the 3D printed version is physically a better part, stronger and more ductile, less prone to fracture, and lower variation in the parameters of its materials. It has also produced them in much, them much faster using 3D printing than traditional castings, cutting production from months to less than two days. These benefits are driving NASA's rocket engine parts supply chain too, which has a stated goal of manufacturing those parts up to 10 times faster and at less than half the original item cost. The space sector, in particular, is fast adopting 3D printing for other, similar purposes because of potential cost savings. For instance, SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket costs some 62 million US dollars per launch, with a maximum payload of 22,800 kilograms resulting in a minimum cost per kilogram of 2720 US dollars. The larger Falcon Heavy rocket costs 90 million US dollars per launch with a minimum cost per kilo of 1410 US dollars. This latter rocket is proposed for Mars missions with each kilogram of load costing at least 5300 US dollars. Those numbers make saving every kilogram through topology optimization and 3D printing and new materials a very attractive and necessary proposition. Now, consider the flexibility which is required for manufacturing. All too often, there is a need to maintain several production lines to cope with changing demand, each line fabricating a different variant, for instance, and the productivity of each dialed up or down according to that demand. 3D printing removes that need as complexity and variability are more easily handled via the same printer. Of course, different printers have different capabilities in terms of materials, colors, accuracy, and precision. But where the differences in demanded objects lie in the form of those objects, one printer can cover several versions with no need for the expenses and delays of retooling. Taken to its limit, this opens several opportunities. The company Local Motors, for example, sees the automotive sector using 3D printing's adaptability to return to the earlier days of cars, when coachworkers would design and make bespoke bodies for noted vehicles like Bugattis and Duesenbergs. That, they say, can be done in workshops anywhere in the world, allowing for local tastes to be an input to those designs. 
Consider the example of Urbi 2, the world's first 3D printed plastic car unveiled in 2013. Made by mechanical engineer Jim Core, Urbi 2 is a fuel efficient, aerodynamic, and lightweight car with the resilience and safety usually found in motorsports vehicles. To make it, Core 3D printed 50 parts in plastic, adding a motor, chassis, and safety cage. Looking at the human resources involved, traditional manufacturing requires teams to make, assemble, and move materials, prototypes, work in progress, and finished items at different locations. To tackle that, manufacturing has already seen the advent of robotics, particularly in sectors like automotive manufacture, and has succeeded in cutting errors, improving time, and reducing headcount. As in those industries that have embraced robots, 3D printing requires very few personnel to maintain the machines. Furthermore, as items made traditionally with several parts requiring assembly are replaced by 3D printed objects that aren't and don't, staff needs will be much reduced. Because 3D printing requires a smaller footprint, it is highly adaptable and can be deployed reasonably quickly. It offers the possibility of quickly ramping up and operating modern manufacturing in places where deploying traditional manufacturing would be difficult and protracted. Many countries' regulatory and fiscal regimes make importing large manufacturing equipment complicated. Setting up logistics can further delay manufacturing capability, and bigger teams will also be required to install and maintain that equipment. The smaller scale of 3D printing makes it a more attractive option, requiring less space, fewer people, and less paperwork to deploy. To illustrate this, consider the experience of technological rollout in another sector, tele telephony. Telephony? Telephony. Many countries in Africa, for instance, moved from very basic wired telephony to widespread mobile networks in a very short time, leveraging both their ease of setup and the increased capability that they bring. Places like Kenya then used those networks to develop and deploy world-leading solutions to areas such as electronic peer-to-peer -peer payments, with examples such as M-Pesa, the M standing for mobile and PESA being Swahili for money. This is a mobile phone-based money transfer financing. Financing and microfinancing service provided by Vodafone for Safaricom and Vodacom, the largest mobile network operators in Kenya and Tanzania, in 2007, and has since expanded to other developing economies in Africa, Asia, and Europe. This service has brought advanced maturity to financial transactions to those countries in a way that would have taken decades otherwise. Likewise, 3D printing can quickly bring high-quality, responsive manufacturing to developing economies, such as the experience of Refabdar in D Tanzania, discussed in Chapter 2. Organizations in the humanitarian and defense sectors have already grasped this and are developing deployable solutions for their fields. Both industries and developing economies, wider societies, also stand to gain from fast-developing, advanced manufacture. The rising need for sustainable manufacture, whether through reducing wastage, improving recycling, or better proximity to a circular economy, means that there is also a significant body of research into how to minimize the environmental footprint of 3D printed parts. Unused materials and powder-based techniques, such as selective laser sintering and selective laser melting, can be recovered and reused. Several companies are researching materials for 3D printing that can be recycled, a key element of the closed-loop cycle. However, much progress is needed to achieve that goal at industrial scales. Still, it is already clear that 3D printing is by far the most sustainable manufacturing solution. Looking at the SCORE metric set, those attributed to manufacturing that will be most affected by 3D printing are as follows. Production costs is reduced due to lower production labor, property, plant, and equipment costs, and a simplification of the production lines. Make cycle time and retooling time are both reduced. Wastage time, the percentage of materials that are wasted during manufacture, is reduced in many of the 3D printing methodologies, as unused materials can be returned to the process. This metric is particularly important in those sectors where the costs of raw materials are especially high, such as those using precious and high-grade metals. Carbon footprint, stemming from lower energy consumption throughout a 3D printed object's 
production cycle. However, a fuller end-to-end -end analysis of energy consumption and consequential emissions may indicate that those are merely shifted elsewhere in the value chain, such as in the production of raw materials. Sidebox, an aid to postponement. It has long been the case that a way to manage variations in time specifications across a range of customers is to employ various postponement in the supply chain. These variations can stem from differing personal tastes, languages, or national or company standards, for example. Rather than have dedicated production lines for each variation, a postponement strategy calls for a common platform to act as the base. In the final components, modules, or alterations required to make the end product are added later or closer to the customer. Companies such as the clothing firm Zara and the IT provider Dell have employed supply chain postponement to such a degree that they have set the benchmark for responsiveness in their respective sectors. Several parts of the supply chain can use postponement from manufacturing through assembly to packaging and labeling. By employing 3D printing in their postponement strategies, supply chains can combine the benefits of both. While 3D printing offers the possibility of producing lots of one, the effort to customize each design every time is onerous and expensive. Using a base design from which to make smaller changes, supply chains can offer the variety they seek without the added costs. For example, firms can provide a range of base designs to customers who can then further personalize the item. As part of the events for its 125th anniversary, consumer electronics firm Philips partnered with the German company Twicket to offer 125 of its customers the opportunity to personalize, personalize their face shavers. Using one of the latest Philips models as a base, each person could select the color, texture, and form of the external grip from a palette of options on Twicket's platform, which were then produced at Philips's 3D printing facilities. This allowed Philips to provide a distinctive customer experience with minimal impact on their production costs and lead time. Naturally, this model can be used with logistic providers and natural in local distribution centers, which can be given inventories of near-complete items to hold and then finished with 3D printers to produce the end customized part. 3D printing and deliver. After reducing the cost and time to manufacture, the next wave of industrial benefits of 3D printing will be in the area of logistics, storage, and movement of materials, parts, and products throughout the value chain. For a supply chain to be effective, it must ensure that the right things are at the right place at the right time, and that can quickly become a very complex demand. If it fails, then the customer doesn't get what they want, and the business spends more to recover from that failure. If a spare part is not available when and where it is needed, machinery is not repaired, production is held up again and again, the customer is again disappointed, and the business spends more in recovery. Traditionally, companies had developed expensive distribution networks with costly transportation and warehouses filled with materials, partly completed products, finished items, and spare parts, spending heavily on those while locking in working capital that could be used more efficiently elsewhere. Many firms go further and invest in optimization to make those operations as efficient, effective, and economical as they can be. 3D printing offers another way. The transformation that 3D printing enables manifests itself in three areas. Demand for warehousing, need for transportation, and exposure to supply chain risk. The savings are significant. A 2014 study by the consultancy PwC estimated that adopting 3D printing to replace maintenance, repair, and operations spares in the aerospace sector alone would save the US or would save 3.4 billion US dollars annually based on half that inventory shifting to 3D printing. Even if that assumption were to be a reduction of only 20%, that still represents over 1 billion dollars in that sector alone. Inventory is a complicated and complex matter that can easily make the difference between a business's success or failure. Too much inventory in the business locks up working capital and becomes exposed to higher storage and insurance costs. If those items were held for too long without being used, they will be depreciated and eventually written off throughout, throughout, or though out, throughout they are at risk of being obsolete or surplus to requirements, thereby requiring disposal and encouraging further costs. 
too little inventory, and the supply chain risks failing to meet its required service levels, and in turn, customer expectations, damaging reputations and future revenues. In response, firms expend considerable effort in refining mathematical algorithms which seek to optimize inventory and balance the service levels required, material lead times, and myriad other factors. Others have sought to increase the flexibility of their manufacturing and supply chain processes, seeking to keep those agile in the face of changing demands. 3D printing offers an attractive element, make items on demand. Rather than storing a long tail of parts, work in progress and finished goods, many supply chains, such as Deutsche Bahn's that was described in the previous chapter, are already considering 3D printing to reduce the need to hold those by digitizing them and producing them on demand, effectively switching their inventory policy to a make-to-order model. The use of on-demand 3D printing enables the virtual warehousing model. Rather than holding many thousands of items, only a few are needed, with the ability to quickly replenish stock within a few or hours or days. That reduces the need for storage space, lowering the cost of stock holding, and it frees up working capital. A 20,000 square foot warehouse with over 20 million US dollars in inventory could be replaced with a bank of 3D printers costing 2 million US dollars in a 200 square foot on demand facility. It was just these benefits that initially drove British audio equipment manufacturer Bowers & Wilkins to decide in 2013 that it was going to use 3D printing to pair its inventory levels while preserving, if not improving, the availability of parts to its service department by producing them on demand. Traditionally, that policy was fraught with the risk of manufacturing delays threatening timelines, and this could still be the case with 3D printing. However, if viewed from an end-to-end perspective, from order to fulfillment, the technique could be advantageous for scheduling if elements such as logistics are included. Spare parts are a particularly attractive first area to tackle with 3D printing, as they tend to be slow-moving, particularly those required for MRO. The design specifications used to make them in the first place are frequently not available. All too often, that data was never requested when they were ordered, or the original supplier stopped making those parts or is no longer around. Larger firms making or using complex products such as jet engines may have tens of thousands of these parts on hand with the financial exposure that involves. As those parts age, many will degrade and weaken, becoming unfit for use and increasing the cost of obsolescence. Several firms, from Airbus to Shell, have noted these characteristics and are now implementing projects to produce those parts on demand to lower costs and improve service. Porsche Classic began to 3D print spares for some of its classic cars in 2017, such as the clutch release lever for the 959 and a crank arm for the 964. These parts were no longer available to reproduce or in stock anywhere and restarting production lines would have been costly for both the company and the enthusiasts needing the parts. Instead, the spares are made on demand to the same standards as the originals, mitigating the need to stock quantities of parts that may never be called for while giving the customers access to them virtually on demand. Interestingly, Porsche found that the 3D printed parts exceeded the required build standards, echoing the experience of other studies and manufacturers. Clearly, the viability of 3D printing spare parts will depend on having a good business case that demonstrates the value in that approach. Factors such as what the spares are made of, the the availability of suitable 3D printers, and the levels of investment needed compared to the benefits that would be accrued all contribute to that, and they may be found wanting. Along with a reduction in warehousing, the need to physically move parts is also significantly reduced. Given that 3D printing permits software files to be transmitted or emailed to the printer versus moving physical inventory, manufacturing or delivery of finished products can originate far closer to end users. This is achieved by placing or using printers closer to the customer, either within a company's own printing facilities or via outsourcing to a nearby 3D print hub or bureau. This benefit has been ably demonstrated by Made in Space's example with the International Space Station, seen in the introduction, and it radically changes how delivery lead times will be perceived and what will be expected of suppliers. 
No longer will parts need to be stored in vast storage spaces or shipped across in between countries, with 3D printing reducing DLT from weeks to hours. This shift in logistics will significantly affect those companies that provide warehousing and logistical solutions. It constitutes a huge threat to third-party logistics, 3PL, their very existence, and the sector is now looking at how to adapt, with many opting to act as 3D printing manufacturing centers. According to a survey conducted by the business intelligence firm EFT, a proportion of 3PL firms already offering 3D printing expertise or services or considering doing so rose from 24 to 41% in the 2014 to 15 period alone, and that trend continues to gain pace. West Monroe Partners consultants Aaron Bresinger and Jeff Arnold said of 3LPs, quote, E-commerce shipping volume may suffer as sellers recognize the capability to transfer their product designs electronically through 3D printing at a location near the consumer. To mitigate the risk of losing shipping business to the electronic transfer of 3D printing blueprints, industry leaders need to incorporate 3D printing into their strategic thinking. End quote. The replacement of obsolete parts is also driving the adoption of 3D printing in several capital-intensive sectors, such as oil and gas, mining, transport, and automotive, industries where parts can have prolonged lifetimes during which their manufacture may have ceased, or the original supplier might have gone out of business. The consortium Mobility Goes Additive, seen in Deutsche Bahn, case example in Chapter 5, came together to actively pursue opportunities to reduce obsolescence in industrial spare parts, in addition to other more traditional avenues. Instead of paying a significant premium for an old supplier to retool to make a replacement, or to a new supplier to produce that part from scratch, the firm can resort to a design company to scan the obsolete part and generate a data file, which naturally would require understanding and re-engineering the internals of the required part, and pass this to a suitable 3D printer for fabrication. Clearly, therefore, the logistics metrics that will be most effective are those related to cost, time, and customer satisfaction, and here they are. Inventory costs, transportation costs, and from those, fulfillment costs are reduced as the need to hold and move stock is lowered if not eliminated. Delivery performance to customer commit date, delivery lead time, and from that order fulfillment cycle time are reduced by placing manufacturer closer to the end consumer of a product. Customer satisfaction is improved at least initially as customers who are used to long lead times are now catered to much faster. These metrics will only improve markedly in the first periods that 3D printing is used, owing to diminishing returns and as warehousing is space is optimized as new lead times return to the lowest practicable level level and as customers become used to the new dynamics 3D printing and return the return part of the supply chain is increasingly important driven by both economic and regulatory needs today it encompasses not just the return of goods sold the so-called reverse supply chain but also after sales and customer support warranty-covered repairs, and the processes associated with any products returned to a company's supplier. That includes issues such as through-life upgrades and modifications, replacement and obsolescence, areas that can be quite costly to manage if done badly, and profitable if done well. Many involved in these areas of the supply chain are already actively investigating, if not actively using, 3D printing to offer better levels of service and lower cost. For example, consider those industry sectors that face issues of equipment and parts that have long life cycles, such as naval ships and submarines, which are typically used for de several decades. The same can be said of oil and gas platforms and much of the major equipment in the mining and transport sector. As mentioned previously, those long life cycles require optimized inventories of spare parts to keep the equipment operational. Therefore, those sectors have vibrant and expensive after-sales sectors, offering warranties, servicing, and parts. Pricing those is often complex, requiring the consideration of safety stocks, costs of storage, probabilities of part failure, and so on, all to arrive at the right figure to charge customers. If parts are 3D printed, however, 
From the same digital files that made them in the first place, the need for all that after-sales machine diminishes. This has wider implications. The Waste and Resources Action Program, WRAP, has stated that in the United Kingdom, about a quarter of electric equipment ending up in household recycling centers can be reused with small repairs. If this right spares can be made available where and when needed, the products last longer and become cheaper to repair, reducing landfill and disposal costs. Similarly, the need to reduce obsolescence through expensive part upgrades is also simplified as tweaking the digital design and producing the new and improved part is faster and ultimately cheaper. That reduction is the burden of obsolescence, and the need for spare parts both stem from the ability of 3D printing to shrink component inventories by making, in one part, parts previously composed of several items. Imagine a product that comprises 10 individual parts, each of which may require replacement. As discussed in Chapter 2, if the entire product is made as a single unit, essentially moving the level of lowest replaceable part, then there is no need for an extensive inventory of spare parts. This advantage must be balanced against the consequence of moving the point of lowest replaceable part. It might become necessary to replace the whole item versus one or more parts, which makes through-life support more expensive and wasteful. As a consequence of these benefits, companies see a reduction in levels of required inventory, therefore reducing the working capital that is tied up in that inventory. With that reduced inventory comes less wastage, as a long tail of items purchased up front in case of need won't have to be scrapped when real consumption is below forecasted demand. As new materials become increasingly recyclable, the potential for a 3D printing-enabled closed-loop supply chain develops. Many items are heat-processed plastics, and as Vice President of Manufacturing Strategy at EMEA at JDA Software, Hans George Kaltenbrunner, notes, quote, It is possible to create a reverse supply chain approach. Customers can recycle used, damaged, or unwanted goods by taking them back to their local 3D print shops so that they can be melted back down and made into something new and usable once more, end quote. However, <clears throat> however, the practicalities of that may be impinged as more complex as multi and multi-material objects are produced. Recycling the sorts of cartons made by firms such as Terra, Tetra Pak, Elopak, and Sig Combo Block, for instance, which typically comprise layers of paper, polyethylene, and aluminum, okay, three very different types, is a difficult and expensive task. Recycling multi-material 3D printed objects may similarly be uneconomic. In the return element of the supply chain, the most affected metrics will therefore be cost of warranties and the cost of obsolescence, as there is a reduced need to hold spare parts to cater for warranties and to retain underused production facilities to manufacture components. Moreover, as designs can be modified prior to their manufacture more easily, spares and equipment are less likely to become obsolete as their designs evolve over time. Disposition costs, driven by the lower need to hold large numbers of spare parts that are not used in the lifetime of the equipment which they support. 3D Printing and Source <clears throat> The impact of 3D printing on sourcing lies in three key areas. What is procured? How is it procured? And how much is it procured for? We'll start with what is procured. It isn't surprising that 3D printing requires the procurement of different things. To start with, raw materials for 3D printing are different from those for traditional manufacture. Rather than buying solid metals, for instance, metal powders are needed. Where items can be made in thermoplastic, that plastic usually needs to be available as a fiber with the right properties and dimensions for 3D printing. This alone is a significant change to procurement. The providers of 3D printing, or th sorry, of 3D printers and printing services will be new to the procurement department. Of course, where the design of items simplifies them, reducing the number of component parts, this also reduces the procurement burden to acquire those components. These sorts of changes are easily adopted by procurement departments. 
For larger, more complex items and equipment, procurement needs to be needs to consider spare parts, their obsolescence, and through life upgrades, all of which must be negotiated and priced into the deal. This can be upfront or a long time after the main item was bought, particularly in capital intensive sectors like defense, oil and gas, transportation, and mining. A warship typically has a lifespan of 15 years, an offshore platform for 30. Buying the lifetime supply of spares requires procurement teams to model several complex factors of consumption, operation, reliability, storage, and obsolescence to arrive at a number that will inevitably be wrong. If spares are left to be bought as required separately from the main equipment, their costs can soon explode when retooling or recommissioning suppliers is added to the cost of the actual parts. 3D printing reduces this exposure, simplifying procurement tasks and reducing their costs through on-demand production by increasing the inventory days of supply without incurring the costs of holding that stock. Okay. Underlining this is the increasingly important role that procurement will play in understanding which items are purchased from third parties as an input to analyzing which would be better to 3D print. Factors such as lead times, necessity for assembly, transportation costs, and so on will all influence the evaluation process, more closely involving procurement teams in the operational decisions of the business than before. The late David Noble, formerly the group CEO of the Chartered Institute of Procurement and Sourcing, told an audience in London in 2016 that the growth in 3D printing's role in supply chains puts greater emphasis on procurement, saying, quote, it means that a shift from manufacturing to materials acquisition becomes a core differentiator, end quote. Often, though, the data needed to conduct the required analyses is not easily available requiring the scouring of contracts and IT systems to build it, as well as filling in gaps through the judicious use of the procurement team's experience and insight. In many companies, however, this need for a collaborative approach will be hampered by functional silos that will need to be dealt with accordingly. Independent of whether to engage with 3D printing, and in light of the emerging trend for data analytics and digital transformation, the earlier a procurement department begins to build these databases and gain clarity of what it is acquiring, the more prepared it will be when the questions are asked. And that is the next question, how it is procured. The biggest impact of 3D printing on actual sourcing comes from another change, the shift to procuring data rather than physical items. As supply chains become more digital and companies trade based on digital designs of items, which are then 3D printed, the size, shape, and processes of procurement will change. The the approach to procuring physical items is different from acquiring data-based designs. For example, it requires new ways of carrying out supplier and product assurance and new questions to be asked of their suppliers. As when procuring software, this makes evaluating suppliers and their designs more elaborate, involving questions of configuration control, information security, limitations, and requirements of use that go far beyond the norm when buying physical items. Licenses for using the data will specify who can use the data, in what circumstances, on what equipment, and for how many iterations. The obligations of intellectual property and liability will be defined in terms that are broader and more detailed than is usually the case with hardware. Production cycles will tend to be longer and procurement teams will need new skills. The capabilities that 3D printing presents also change some fundamental principles of procurement. The ability to produce lots of one as well as multiple lots on the same machine with fewer or no changes to the tooling, means that there is little need for minimum or economic order quantities. The same data file can be used to make one item or many. It is the license that regulates how many of an item can be produced from the same data file. The changing nature of procurement raises the question of how the licenses will be enforced. Lessons can be learned from the music industry, which went from selling vinyl records, cassettes, and CDs to selling audio data files in the last two decades. During that uncontrolled transition, the industry went through considerable difficulty, particularly with respect to the payment of royalties as unauthorized copying of music 
was rife. Manufacturing has an opportunity to tread over a used path and ensure that it doesn't fall over the same hurdles with 3D printing. How much is it procured for? As well as being simpler to generate, the pricing structure, structure of purchased 3D printing items is more predictable. This arises from several factors. First, the simplification relative to the pricing models for equipment, spares, and support as supply chains become more digital. The lower complexity in the supplier portfolio, which results from having fewer separate components in the final product, and the ease of updating and modifying data files rather than reissuing physical items. Although sourcing software can generally be a more complex and involved process than sourcing physical items, that stems from the need for long evaluation phases. With 3D printing, what is acquired is a design file for a part, one that usually will have developed with the end user. With the development of standards and regulations for 3D printing, see chapter 8, the effort and time required to build those design files will be considerably reduced. Once a design is approved for purchase, further procurement will be much faster. Another procurement cost benefit is the reduction, if not elimination, of cross-border tariffs. Several countries across the globe import or impose import tariffs on parts, work in progress, and finished goods. With 3D printing, the subject of the transaction is software, a data file, rather than a physical object, so the system of tariffs is changed and a means to regulate it for software developed. These files can be passed without or across borders without incurring those import duties. This eliminates the need for complex INCO terms such as FOB, free on board, CPT, carriage paid to, and the like. For example, Brazil today imposes a levy of 18% on the importation of several stainless steel parts. If users of these parts, like Ford, decide to employ local 3D printing facilities and transmit the data files from the USA or Europe for parts to be manufactured in Brazil, then their cost bases will decline, with an accompanying cost of loss of revenue for the Brazilian government. However, more advanced econ economies may be catching up with this, the European Union adjusted its leg legislation on value-added tax to cover telecommunications, broadcasting, and e-services that are sold directly to consumers. It is realistic to consider this being extended to include transactions of digital design files in the near to medium term. From a sourcing perspective, then, these will be the most affected metrics. Sourcing cost as resource requirements are more likely to decline since it is easier to carry out the procurement activities of software than physical items, and the additional costs on top of a part's base cost due to tariffs, life spares, and so on also decline. Inventory days of supply are increased, but without the added stockholding cost. 3D Printing and Planning in most industry sectors, it is recognized that the right supply chain is a strategic differentiator, and getting all the parts of a supply chain working correctly within and between organizations is critical to success. That means planning the supply chain is now of paramount importance. Such planning is increasingly affected by customer requirements, and those can and do change rapidly, particularly in consumer goods sectors, but also in capital-intensive industries. Once those needs are understood, having a supply chain that is agile, able to react quickly to changes, will ensure those dynamic requirements can be met. Moreover, if the supply chain is to react in the right way and at the right time, it needs to operate in an always-on environment, not only bringing visibility of what is taking place along the whole value chain, but also reacting to changes in real time, or at least as close to that as is practicable. Supply chains working with traditional manufacturing simply cannot meet all of those needs in the emerging, fast-changing market without considerable investment in capacity and data analytics, but those using 3D printing can. Planning a supply chain involves understanding three things. One, what the strategic goals of that supply chain are. Two, what the customer wants to see from it. And three, how the business is going to meet that need. Typically, the output from these factors informs decisions of where to place the elements for the entire supply chain, from manufacturing to warehousing facilities, analyzing which provider to use for logistics, what the necessary inventory levels of raw materials, 
WIP and spare parts are throughout the supply chain and what the interrelations among manufacturers, suppliers, customers, and the company itself should be. At the heart is answering how to best service the customer while balancing cost, quality, timeliness, and complexity. 3D printing affects all these parts, such as enabling a reduction in inventory levels by moving products out of physical storage into a digital state, and changing the philosophy of a supply chain from make to stock to make to order. This reduces the warehousing footprint needed within the modern supply chain. No longer do we need warehouses filled with long tails of products and parts that have very slow turnover. 3D printing will also enable a reduction in the number of retail and support centers. Imagine customers no longer needing to go to a shop to buy a product or a part, but rather moving toward an Amazon-like operating model where they select products and parts online, customized, ordered, manufactured to their specific requirements, and delivered to their door as and when required, within the limitations of the 3D printing solutions available, of course. As we move into local manufacture, we can go to a local fabrication center to buy that final product instead of a shop. In our ever more competitive world, supply chains are increasingly aiming to achieve perfect orders, getting the right thing to the right place at the right time. This trend is particularly relevant in the retail and service industries where customer dissatisfaction is communicated quickly, particularly in today's environment of peer review. That trend is also growing in industrial sectors as customers are less tolerant of mistakes than ever, usually because it eventually costs them. Getting orders right also reduces the incidence of returns, a concern usually forgotten in many supply chains that is wasteful and often expensive to deal with. The advantages of 3D printing, with the ability to ensure the right thing is made quickly and close to, or even at, the location where it is needed and to do so on demand, make it a valuable and desirable channel for manufacturing. Supply chain strategies are shaped by a company's business strategy and naturally vary accordingly. Amazon has a stated aim of getting its products to the customer with the lowest prices and the utmost convenience, which has led it to include technological innovations in its logistics. In the USA, it recently filed to use drones to, to deliver products in under an hour in urban areas, going further in the employment of predictive logistics and sending out goods before they are demanded all of which is dependent on excellent demand algorithms. In the early 2000s, when Nokia opted to become the fastest producer of mobile phone handset models, it rearranged its market research, suppliers, manufacturing approach, and logistics framework to accommodate that aim. Other companies have chosen to focus on service levels, ensuring that critical products are available at near zero notice, and requiring the establishment of distribution centers near their customers. The advent of 3D printing enables the possibility of new supply chain models, as described in more depth in Chapter 7. One part of supply chain planning that 3D printing has already affected is market research. Traditionally, a firm will employ researchers to develop a requirement based on customer feedback, after which a prototype will be made, then given to customers to test and comment on. That feedback is incorporated into a new iteration of the requirement and the product. In this scenario, volumes of products are low, so the cost per item can be quite elevated. 3D printing reduced the time and the cost involved. Customers can participate in the digital design stage far more readily by receiving a prototype and commenting on it, and that feedback will be incorporated in the next design and prototype in a fraction of the time, and therefore the cost of the traditional approach. This has parallels with the agile design approach that the software engineering has used for the last 15 years. As opposed to the so-called traditional or waterfall approach, agile aims to get a design to the requirement through frequent and constant feedback from the end user, moving the design on a little and testing that with the user, then using that feedback in the next iteration and so on until the user is happy with the result. Retail companies are already using 3D printing for such approaches in market research to pilot new ideas with the buying public. Unilever regularly uses it to test new packaging forms and textures more economically and effectively. With 3D printing's capability of producing short runs, those pilots can quickly be produced in batches for more rapid, direct, and wider customer feedback. 
When GE's oil and gas division began to use 3D printing to help with their prototyping, they reduced the cycle time from design to prototype from 12 weeks to 12 hours. With these faster research times, manufacturers can respond to changing demands more quickly and accelerate product life cycles, giving them a competitive edge in what are frequently crowded markets where even the smallest advantage is the difference between being a winner and an also-ran. The biggest beneficiaries of this in the shorter term are newer market entrants. If a new player wants to move into a sector, no longer are they going to have the high burden of a high cost of entry and a lengthy and expensive period to get the product just right. Whereas before, they would have to secure a prototype manufacturer and pay for tooling them up with equipment that may have been bespoke, they can now move from design to first production in a matter of days, as opposed to weeks, and for hundreds of dollars, as opposed to several tens of thousands. Instant Supply Chains one set of supply chains that are already being transformed by 3D printing are those concerned with the humanitarian and emergency sectors. International aid organizations like Médecins Sans Frontières, MSF, the Red Cross, and the Red Crescent have used 3D printers to provide prosthetics and other medical equipment, pharmaceuticals, spare parts, and even shelters in areas where logistical difficulty would prevent those people in need quickly enough. Many of these organizations don't have a permanent supply chain, instead relying on quickly establishing these when called. One example of this is Field Ready, which works with humanitarian organizations to provide engineering-based solutions to supply, to supply chain issues and uses 3D printing to supply in the field. When the U.S. Virgin Islands were struck by two Category 5 hurricanes in late 2017, the island's electrical systems were destroyed seriously hindering efforts to get aid to those who needed it, as well as curtailing everyday life. Because efforts to get to restore the island's power generation were lagging, the team from Field Ready collected as many solar panels as they could find to provide electricity more quickly. Many of the panels were found to be functional, but they needed to be charged, and with the wider power network not available, an alternative had to be found, using high-capacity batteries instead to give them a boost. To do this, the panels needed a bespoke part to connect them to those batteries, and the lead time to get it was too long. Instead, the Field Ready team created a design for the connector using CAD software and produced it on a 3D printer, itself using industrial batteries. Before this, in one of the first examples of 3D printers being used post-disaster recovery, Field Ready produced a fitting to repair the water pipes in Displaced People's Camp in Nepal in the aftermath of the magnitude 7.8 earthquake there in 2015. The plastic part was produced virtually overnight using a 3D printer powered from a battery of the Field Ready team's Land Rover. Once installed, the 200 families in the camp had access to water. The NGOs, the advantages, no, two NGOs, the advantages of 3D printing are plain to see. They enable the fabrication of items at or very close to the locations where they are most needed, using industrial or car batteries to power them. This advantage is amplified with the use of drones for distribution. 3D printers have the flexibility to make a wide variety of parts customized to a specific person, in the case of a medical or prosthetic part. The effects of disasters and emergencies mean that items needed for repairs either can be one of a huge range or bespoke, depending on what equipment was broken or damaged. Therefore, rescue, recovery, and support teams must carry or convey a large amount of gear to cover all options. Using 3D printing to make many of those items lets teams reduce this load. At the same time, the usual constraints of 3D printing, such as the need to machine them to a high level of finish, are superseded by the need for a good enough, possibly temporary part. This all translates into lives saved and improved and costs reduced. For instance, a 10 cent umbilical clamp needed in Haiti, which was hit by catastrophic and consequent or consecutive floods and earthquakes, costs uh, one U.S. dollar, of which 90% represents transport and storage. In 2015, Andrew Lamb from Field Ready calculated that even if the savings in these logistic costs were in the order of 40 to 50%, that would cut between 5 and 7 billion U.S. dollars per annum from the cost of humanitarian aid. 
Given 3D printing's ability to make things on demand, one area of supply chain management that will be eased is sales and operations planning. Integrating management processes into all of an organization's functions, SNOP uses an up-to-date forecast of demand to tune the sales plan, and from that, the production, inventory, and other supply chain plans. The goal is to balance all of these, resulting in an efficient, effective, and economic supply chain. However, SNOP is often plagued with inefficiency because of the difficulty of properly forecasting demand. One obvious solution is to have highly accurate demand forecasts, and organizations can expend considerable time and resources to achieve that. A more practical approach is to improve the flexibility and responsiveness of the supply chain. It is here that 3D printing can help. By responding more quickly to changes in required volumes of different configurations and designs, and rapidly reconfiguring what is produced, 3D printing-based production mitigates inaccuracies in forecasting, enabling that goal of a good supply chain. Other contributions to an effective SNOP derive from 3D printing's effect on the other areas of the supply chain described in this chapter. The success of the planning element of the supply chain is typically conveyed in four metrics, each of which are improved by 3D printing. Total Cost to Serve, or TCTS. As 3D printing reduces the cost of the individual elements from market research and full manufacturing to the reduced need for warehousing and distribution, it significantly reduces the TCTS. Perfect Order Fulfillment, and POF, along with a percentage of orders delivered in full, or PODIF. 3D printing allows the customer to see exactly what they will receive, and provided that the elements of the supply chain are suitably synchronized, errors will be minimized, improving both. Order Fulfillment Cycle Time, OFCT. 3D printing accelerates the individual stages of a supply chain from market research to delivery. When one considers the full time for manufacture, from tooling up to production, OFCT is significantly reduced. Of course, that benefit abates as volumes increase, and traditional manufacture will be, will be the dominant approach for several decades until 3D printing enters mass production. However, even in those situations, using 3D printing to accelerate mold production time brings advantages overall. Supply Chain Flexibility and, adapti and Adaptability As 3D printing can cope with changes in form, significantly faster than tri traditional manufacturing, and as manufacturing can be shifted more easily to available capacity elsewhere, both the flexibility and adaptability metrics are improved. 3D printing and enable. The enable area of the supply chain refers to the activities associated with the management of the supply chain, such as the management of business rules, performance, data, resources, facilities, contracts, supply chain network, regulatory compliance, and risk. 3D printing requires a different approach to shaping and managing the supply chain, which affects all these directly or indirectly. However, the scale of the differences is unlikely to be significant. After all, all the preceding areas apply equally and have value, whether using 3D printing or traditional manufacture. Earlier parts of this book have touched on several of these changes, such as the need for different approaches to contracts and procurement, data management, and the supply chain footprint. As with all situations where companies introduce new techniques like Lean, Six Sigma, or Just-in-Time, the management of these activities needs to adapt to the new reality. One activity, activity area is worth highlighting in more detail, that of supply chain risk. The 2011 disaster in Fukushima, Japan, caused by the cataclysmic combination of the Tohoku earthquake and tsunami and the consequent Fukushima Daiichi nuclear accident, significantly reduced the country's electricity supply. The tragedy halted 90% of production capacity in the area, including the silicon wafer and automotive part supply chains there, which compromised 22% of the world's 300mm wafer production and 60% of its critical automotive parts industry, as well as a significant percentage of other products like flashcards. Similarly, a fire at the Royal Phillips Electronics Plant in Albuquerque, New Mexico, in March of 2000, threatened the supply of chips to, the, to two of the com company's major clients. Between them, 
Nokia and Ericsson accounted for 40% of the plant's demand. Without this plant, production of several million handsets at both would come to a shuddering halt. It took industry-changing efforts to mitigate the impacts, with the bigger lessons being the need for supply chains to quickly adapt to new circumstances. These are the sort of risks that many supply chains face today, with manufacturing restricted to single or a few locations. If those are impacted by any one of several threats, natural or human in origin, the time needed to recover can slow the entire supply chain. The identification of supply chain risks needs to go deeper. The lack of a single item costing a few dollars could halt operations for hours or days, with revenue risk measuring in the hundreds of thousands or more per day, particularly in sectors like oil and gas or mining. Fortunately, today there is increased recognition that supply chain risk management is essential to successful and sustainable operations, and more companies have processes and structures in place that seek out and reduce risks in each part of the chain. 3D printing mitigates many of those risks. It allows items to be made to order closer to where they are needed, reducing lead times and providing a way to mitigate the threat of an unexpected spike in demand. As production can be quickly redirected from other um, threat-rich locations and distributed more widely if needed, 3D printing makes supply chains more resilient. In the enable set of processes, therefore, the most affected metric is supply chain risk, which is lowered together with a potential reduction in contingency budgets as supply chain elements from sourcing through manufacturing to logistics can be more easily distributed across geographies to minimize the potential for single points of failure in the network. The Supply Chain Case for 3D Printing this chapter has provided a summary of how 3D printing impacts the various supply chain metrics. Given the benefits that 3D printing brings, it is clear that businesses cannot afford to ignore it, nor think it is something that can be postponed for a decade. Most company strategies look at a planning horizon of 5 to 10 years, and in that time, 3D printing will be a more prevalent component of supply chains. Indeed, the companies which will succeed in the medium term are those who realize the benefits described in this chapter, increasing revenues and reducing costs. These factors have been echoed by companies pressing ahead with 3D printing. A survey by the film Sculptio in 2017 found that 70% of companies they interviewed had increased their investments in 3D printing, up from 49% the previous year, and more competitors were also using 3D printing. In the companies that were using the technologies, 43% 43, 43 were using it for production, up from 22% the previous year. The impacts of 3D printing on individual elements in the supply chain are wide and significant, and lead to operational improvement, even excellence. However, to make significant step changes in performance, operational innovation is called for, doing things in a completely new way. 3D printing enables that innovation by facilitating the implementation of new supply chain models. This gives not just companies, but entire sectors, a means to make that leap and to do things differently. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and visit my channel for more exciting content.